Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's Anelli here answering your questions today. Today's question is on off seasons as a major league player or as a professional player. What are they like? Do teams make you do certain things? Do teams say, hey, you have to do this for lifts? You have to do this much hitting and fielding? Do they send anyone out there? Do they make you come and go to a trainer or anything like that? So how does it all work? So we're gonna kind of hit on all that today, okay? Um, here's probably the biggest shocker when it comes to all that stuff is a lot of it is you're kind of on your own, okay? At least when I was playing. I don't know if it's different now. I doubt it's very different now. Um, but honestly, a lot of it was, hey man, come back in shape and come back, hopefully better player, ready to go, okay? You're a big boy now, you're a professional, take care of yourself, and we'll see you in four months, all right? Now, some players are going to have shorter off seasons than others because some players are going to go to instructional league right when the season ends. So let's say the season ends in September, might go to instructional league for a little bit, all right? Some players are gonna go to Arizona Fall League, which we've made videos on. Some players may go to winter leagues, but there's a lot of players that don't, don't do that stuff, okay? Or maybe do it for a year or so, and then the next year they're done, all right? So they have a four month off, off season. You know, some players have September, October, November, December, January, depending if you're going to major league camp, you might even have February off, because minor league camp doesn't really start until uh, March usually. So you could have a really long off season. And for most of the years when I was home, no one checked in on me. No one was like, Hey Matt, you do your lifting today? No. You take ground balls today? You did? Like no one ever did that. I was on my own and most players are on their own and you're held as an adult. And you know, if you come back to spring training and you're 50 pounds overweight and you haven't done a damn thing, well then your career is going to be really short. All right, so that's how it really works at that level. It's like you put in the work, you'll you'll stick around, or you'll have a chance to stick around. If you don't, you'll be cut, and then you'll go get a regular job, and you won't play baseball anymore. Okay, so um, and that's how it was with almost every team I played for. Now there were certain teams that would like give you a workout plan and be like, hey, you know, follow this plan. Um, but I, I don't remember ever having to like check in with anyone. I don't remember ever having to really send in any workout plans. Um, and so you could follow it if you wanted to, or you don't have to, I mean, no one's there to see you, so you can do it your own thing if you want, right? When it comes to hitting and feeling and all that stuff, they don't give you anyone to go see. They don't set you up with a place to hit. So you just gotta go do it yourself. So depending on where you're from, if you're from like a cold weather climate like I am, you know, finding a place to field, Good luck. You got to find an indoor place, hopefully, or you got to move someplace else or go down, go down south and try to find some place to do it. Hitting wise, you know what, what I did, I basically the place that I gave lessons at, that's where I hit at. That's where I fielded at. Right. I could try. There was a turf field there. Try to sneak on it. I take ground balls in a small little hitting tunnel. And so looking back, actually, it probably would have been a good idea to get some place maybe out in Arizona, get like a, a, a little small apartment or something and just stay out there and be able to work out year round. But, you know, like I said, my family was back in Massachusetts. My friends were here. And so it was just easier to come back home. Plus, you're away for, you know, eight months of the season. You want to be able to go back home. At least I wanted to. So there were some players that got apartments and stuff down south, whether it was in Florida or Arizona, depending on where their spring training complex is. But I always went back to, to my home in, uh, in Massachusetts. Okay. So literally it, it's really up to the player. Okay. And you've got to make sure that you're doing your stuff. You got to make sure that you're getting up every day. You know, what I would do, normally do, I'd wake up and I go work out first thing in the morning. All right. So at the beginning of my professional career, I, I did it by myself. And then after a couple of years, I got myself a trainer and I would go out and they'd put me through a workout. All right. So I would do that for like an hour and a half. Um, when I was done with that, I usually drive home, get home, eat, relax for a little bit. And then typically later in my career, actually, I hit at night. So I'd work out in the morning, I'd relax for the day, and then I'd hit field ground balls and all that stuff at night because 
again, you have to find a place to do it. And in my area, winter uh, training facilities, we have a lot of indoor facilities where you can go and hit and field, but they get really busy during the day. So usually I would wait until like later at night and I do like late sessions. So I wait for everyone to get out of there and then I go in sometimes at eight, nine o'clock and be able to work out for an hour, hour and a half, get all my swings in, get my ground balls in and all that stuff because everyone basically be gone by then. Um, so that's how I kind of structured my day. And I do it, you know, I'd probably work out f probably four to five times a week. And as far as baseball stuff goes, early on in the winter, I wouldn't do a whole lot. So again, I've been hitting and fielding every day for eight months. And so I usually take like a month or two off of the hitting and the fielding and everything. And then I start to work myself back into it, probably normally around December. And then January, I'm going pretty hard. I'm going probably in January, I'm probably hitting four or five days a week and fielding. And then February, I'm starting to almost go every day. And then we leave for spring training right around mid-February, usually around like February 10th, 12th, 13th, somewhere in there, okay? So that's kind of how I broke up the off season, all right? But again, it was all me. If I, if I wanted to sit on the sofa and do nothing, I could have, right? The years that I got hurt, it's the hardest thing about getting injured. The year I got hurt, I had a cast on my wrist for a while, couldn't do anything. I got to do some, move around a little bit, try to do some lower body stuff, but I couldn't swing, couldn't feel, couldn't do anything. So, um, and that shows, like when you have an off season, that was one of the hardest things for me. When I had off seasons where I was injured, I'd show up to spring training, I didn't feel prepared because I wasn't able to do as much. So, like I said, if you're if you're somebody that's not going to be injured and just going to say, eh, I'm not going to do it, you'll be out you'll be out of professional baseball like super super fast. All right. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, give the thumbs up, share the video with all your friends. Uh, check out the description box below. We've got a deal going on with Plate Crate. If you click on the link, type in Antonelli, uh, you will uh, get 50% off your first Plate Crate. Also have a link to our Patreon site where you can support the channel. And we've got a bunch of other stuff in the description box as well. So check all that out. And that's all I got, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later.